Chapter 4 Spoiler The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth Shivi, Kirta, Aruzo, Agra, Azorde. This is not a magic spell. These are words from the languages of the world the fates divide. Each word belongs to one part of the book that Hanin and I will connect to the events of the story, along with retelling our favorite moments, picking our favorite quotes, and of course, not forgetting how Syra and Akos went on the same mission, but on different journeys. My name is Nesma. Turn the page. Hello, this is Hanin. And this is Nesma. <laughs> Welcome to another chapter in Between the Pages. We are here with The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth, and this is a spoiler episode, <laughs> so yes. be warned, we're gonna <laughs> just go right into it. <laughs> yes. So we have a couple of like favorite things that we have in the novel that we've come across, and we want to share these things with you today. So, should I start or should you start? <laughs> you. <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. So, there's something that I came across with with this novel. Is I found it very interesting that Veronica Roth put on each part. We know that the book is divided into... Divided. <laughs> <laughs> Keyword divided. Divided into five parts. And each part has a word. Each word represents is standing for something. Because... It made me think of why did she choose to put these words for each part. It's so, like a title to this part. A hint I, yes, on what's it's, gonna happen. It's hint on yes, what's the key word of the fort. You know? Exactly. So um, with the first word that we have, uh, we have the word shivi, shivi, mm -hmm. which stands for can, should, or must. In this chapter, we have Syrah warning the Shotat people that Issei Benazit is going to attack uh, Shotat and that uh, they should evacuate with the sojourn ship and flee from Voa. Mm -hmm. Due to that, so many people died because Issei Benazit decided to attack the sojourn ship and it, it like eliminated entirely, so many people lost their lives because of that. So by the end of the chapter, we are... Um, left with uh, Sarah's guilt and all these people dead. So in a way, it stands for... She, the stands for what she can do as a, as a like, leader for the, for the Shotet people. What she should have done or what she should have done in that case or what, and what she must do in order to make the wrong right, so to say. Mm -hmm. So the word Shivi here, in a way, reflects what what she can do as a leader. Example, warning her people to flee, okay? And she did that. What she should have done, which is out of our hands, basically. And what she must do in order to make right what was done wrong. So the choice of language uh, here, Shivi, is from Thuvazit, the Thuvazit language. It can't be a coincidence that she chose that word from that language. Why? Because... Ah, because she is actually... Uh, Thuvazit. Thuvazit, yes. Yeah, okay. I was gonna contradict you. As in, shouldn't this be about Isai Benesit for choosing to attack Sh the Shotet or... I guess, yeah. But I have one more thing to add. Mm -hmm. That um, we know that by Thuvazit language, we've mentioned this previously, that the language is a more romantic and a soothing language. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what the word is meant to do. It's like, I think whoever uses this word in whatever context, it says that however you wish to interpret it. Like, what you can, should, or must do are all the same, basically. Yeah. That, like... Mm -hmm. Meaning that whatever action you have taken in that moment was meant to happen and there's no reason to dwell on the past, basically. And yeah. we have uh -huh. that we have that uh that quote. Yes. Here we have um 
the the moment where she was with Akos after all those people died in her room. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it. <laughs> okay. Um, later, I pressed my face to my pillow and sobbed. Akos climbed into my bunk and curled his body around mine, and I allowed it. I told them to evacuate, I said. I'm the reason there were so many people on that ship. You tried to help, Akko said. All you did was try to help. It wasn't reassuring. What a person tried to do didn't matter. What mattered was the result. And the death deaths of hundreds were the result here. That loss was my responsibility. In a fair world, I would have marked every single life on my arm to carry them around forever. But I did not have enough skin for that. Akos held me tighter so I could feel his heartbeat against my spine, so I began to sob again. I fell asleep with a press of wet fabric against my face. So here, in a way, like, she the is meant to show us that, like, some things are not, in, like, we can't control them, you know, even mm -hmm. as leaders of many people. And there was this part as well when they were going to attack Laz, uh, going to, um, they've already decided on the mission and they gathered the people and everything. There was this toast that, um, uh, Tekka did before they left. Mm, I wait. remember. Um, um, wait, here it was. Um, no, it was Sifa. Sorry, it was Sifa. Sifa offered a toast, translating to Shotet from Thuvizit. To what we have done, to what we are doing, and what we will do. And I drank. So it's like, everything is just coming together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love how she's using the language and the vocab and the difference yes. in culture. And she's like braiding them into the story, making, exactly. making it a part of, making it a character even. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay, there was where the... Uh, there was in uh, part one. Um, actually, the 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 word can, should, and must could also be applied not when Zed is I decided to attack the show that no at the very beginning when she decided to kill Rizek. I right. mean, what she sh what she can, should, or must, must do. do. They are all the one because yes. like all of them lead to her killing him. Yes. But That's I mean, true. that was like the worst thing to both uh, Sarah, Sarah warning them to evacuate and Izay killing Rizek. That is the worst thing to happen to Sarah and Akos because like it was written there as well um, that they were both people who carried every sca scrap of everything around. But maybe they could help each other set things down piece by piece. But I mean, they they hold everything good or bad so close to them and feel it so so intensely, and that makes them good for each other. I guess, like yeah, I mean, definitely, they they understand how much each of them is carrying, and they try to <laughs> to, to to take more and lift it from each other. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I love that, and it's seen when Akos does it twice. Um, I can't recall if Syrah did that. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, but when he, when she uh, was sending the message for her people to evacuate, and he was like, and he was like there and telling her, "There, there, I've got you." Wait here. Ah, uh, yeah, you did well. He said quietly, "You did well. I have you. I have you." It's like, and he's oh. holding there her like that. And I mean, oh my god, <laughs> it's so. <laughs> containing in a way i don't know like she's that she's that she's that so much energy the current and her her all all of her i don't know and he's i guess the perfect one to contain that yeah. i don't know he is he's in a way like completing her mm -hmm. you know he's a missing part of her i guess in a way <laughs> i just i love these two together yes it's like from from their their situation from the very beginning even in carve the mark him being the 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 painkiller to her pain you know yes or, i don't know the 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 only person person where she can 
relax and be soothed around him from all the pain and all the stress and all the pressure she has around her even like veronica roth keeps pressing on the actually controversial matter to them of like being his only and like you know that fate says that Mm -hmm. and then her wanting him to choose to choose her and i don't know it's this dynamic that i love yeah, so I know. much yeah this is like i don't know i love the relationship so much which was why i was kind of a little disappointed when uh when i when we fir- when i came to the like to the middle of the novel when i started realizing that oh my god they're gonna have different paths and different they're gonna be separated from each other mm-hmm. because like i don't know i just love them so much together that when they're apart I'm not happy. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Like, I, I, I feel like they need each other so much that when they're not together, that everything just is so badly, yani, incorporated. You know, like when, when, when they had the same, like, it just frustrated me as a reader that to have both protagonists go on the same mission of killing Lazmet, uh-huh. but they're both. Yes on different paths like, yeah I why mean, why i don't understand <laughs> but could they have had it a different way where he couldn't choose her i mean like look at this part yeah when he was talking about his fate and you know he felt like a deep sea creature on a hook mm-hmm. being drawn toward the surface he couldn't help but go where the line pulled him and death waited above the water but there was nothing he could do about it I mean, Syrah sees that in him, but she translating into him not having any choice but to love her. But I mean, what if what if that's the case? It's like what? A, what? Why is that so bad? Yes, you know, like, like it's it's why? perfect. <laughs> I don't know, like having someone not to have a choice but to love you, having that security yeah i don't know maybe yes she sees it and no no he must choose her no not be forced to be with her but yes choose to be with she her, doesn't but... want to be something he suffers and i mean someone with her journey or like background or life or upbringing or whatever yes i understand where that is coming from but if we apply Still. it to the real life i mean <laughs> <laughs> in my head it could have gone way more like interesting if they had been together the whole novel you know uh, like maybe go on the mission together and try to find a way to defeat them together because if they're in- and maybe get separated because of Lazimuth he separates them in a way maybe, you know yes but that's so classical I, I don't know. know I I mean like Veronica did a very good job with this she did but I was just going to say, mm-hmm. if they had been together in the journey, then it would have contradicted the title of the novel. Because mm-hmm. we say the fates divide, divide, okay? Dividing as in a sense of two things. We can say divided because they have been divided in a way like they've grown up with their fates, but their fates are actually not their own. So they're basically switched, so they're divided. You know, they're mm-hmm. divided taken apart from their the fate that they've grown up with you know like it's been taken away from them so that's like divided another divided thing is like from fate itself yeah okay yes, uh-huh. divided from fate itself okay uh-huh. the fates divide okay both fates because we have two fates but what if the f- fates divide like fate is dividing that's what i uh-huh. know what that's what i'm saying as yeah. well like in the second sense is that akos and Syra, they themselves are the fates so basically, because they have gone on dif- different paths, that's when she says the fates divide. So basically, they are going to dis- ah. they're uh, going to discover themselves without their partner or their lover on their own to try and figure out who they are and who they want to be without having anyone around them telling how they should think or how they should act. So it's like the fates divide. So Syra and Aquas divide, but it's like. But they come together again as a whole person. You yeah. know, they've mm-hmm. suffered on their own. They've healed. Not really on their whole, own. but they found. 
Yes, they found the part of themselves that was missing. Exactly. But and they're not whole because they're not together, you know? I don't know. I mean. yes. yeah. Not that I believe that we're not whole without our mates, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come <laughs> anyway. on, let's not go there. <laughs> okay, I think I have an interesting note in it. Mm-hmm. About the part where he felt like he was pulled toward his fate and yes. the code that I just read. Um, I don't know. I wrote like, aren't we all like, aren't we all on some rope being pulled to that fate? Like, yeah. what is life without death, without being it ended by dying? I mean, I don't know. There is the concept of immortality, but I guess, like, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like through through our faith we live and walking towards a certain end has a solemnness to it, a, a worth a value to life. I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but like, yeah, that's... It's like you're talking about Akos and how he's, like, he can't escape his fate. Mm-hmm. Like, can you remind me again, like, Cyrus fate was to die for in the service of, of the, the family, family Novak. Novak yes. Okay. Akos's was to cross the divide, wasn't yeah. it? Yes. And he crossed the divide. He crossed the divide the divide when he was a baby. Right, when he was taken from Voa to uh Hesse. Uh-huh. Right. So they both fulfilled their fates already. Yes, they both did, but at this part where he felt like this, he didn't he didn't know it yet. Yeah. He thinks he's still going to die. And he's think he's going to die in service to the family, Syra, Syra. basically. I don't know why he forgot about Vakrays. Like, yeah. I mean, if if Lazmet wasn't alive, then yeah. there is still no effects out there. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it doesn't have to be Syra. So why be so uptight, down, uptight about it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I wanted to address the idea of of fate and. Whether you know it or not, it's there. And exactly. you're going towards it why anyway. Why fight it? Why fight it? Exactly. And why choose not to choose? Yeah. Like, I mean, he already... Yani, with every breath, he chooses to love her, even though he wouldn't admit that or he doesn't want to choose. But he's choosing to love her anyway. And let's take maybe another story. Heartless, for example. By Marissa Mayer. By Marissa Mayer, yes. Yeah. Like, the protagonist, Catherine, with... I think choose to still love Jest even if she knows the end, even if she knows how it ends. And yeah. I don't know, even when she does know her fate, she devi- she chose to do something else and her fate was fulfilled in the end when she you when when it was told to her by the end of the novel. I mean, this is life. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> she was cowling, which which he knew didn't mean she was mad, even though that's how it looked. When she was mad, she was a statue. When she was laughing, she was scared out of her mind. And she was scowling. Well, he didn't quite know. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how... He knows her. He knows her, and she knows him. She can pick him out of a crowd, you know? I, I always love that when, you, when they do this in books, when... Mm-hmm. You know your partner inside yes. out, you know, and that and that entitles you to them more than anyone. Yeah, I don't know. It's like you know, it's even even as children when they, like, yeah, I don't don't mean partners. Even as children, anyone would like claim that he knows this someone best, so he's their best friend, or you know, <laughs> it's this aspect, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I love it when they do that. I mean. I guess Verdu Saira like said something that she knows about Akos but nobody else notices. I don't know. But I didn't pick on that, I guess. Anyway. No, neither did I. I never But I attention. no, she did. You know, she did, but I didn't highlight it so I, I, I forget, but she talked about like she thought by the end that he was one of the guards, but it's not him. Right, yes, right, and right. Ayo. She would remember in her mind. She would say, uh, right, he would say to the Syrah in his head. And she would say to the Akos in her head. Yeah. They would be... They would be I talking mean, to each other, but the, the other person wouldn't be there with them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I loved that. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved in Syrah as well, which was... In the very beginning, the first part in the book, um, 
her resilience, like how she knows herself, how much pain she can take and knowing that she can she can fall but she can get back up and this put our trust in her that she can take this story somewhere, that she can yes. get over anything which made us question why are they apart, you know? Even, I don't know, like they could face this together and yeah... <laughs> I know, that's why I keep saying they belong together. Like, literally, <laughs> when they were apart, I was so upset. I was so upset. And the thing is, like, they were on the mission for the same goal. <laughs> Which, it's very ironic. I love it. It's like a parody. I don't know. <laughs> or a parody. I don't it's know. It's a par- parody. I don't know. Parody. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> it's like synopsis or synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on to the second word of the second part. Uh, kirta. Kirta? Yeah. Kirta. Which... Kirta or Kirta? It's an Ogren. It's an Ogren language, which means that which has been crushed into a new shape. This is the part of the book where we have Syra and Akos find out who they truly are. We have the line which is uh, with a, we know you as Syra Noavec and Akos Kereseth, mm-hmm. when in fact you are Syra Kereseth and Akos Noavec. Noavec. <laughs> yeah. That was mind blowing. Yes. But that brings us back to a prediction you had. You said that <laughs> yeah. Syra mm-hmm. isn't actually a Noavec, you, but you said she was a Benazid because you thought she was, she wants to kill him. She w- she's fated to kill Rizek. Rizek, yes, because it's so obvious that she can kill him, but she didn't. Yeah, yeah. yes. But she is a Noavec. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, a Kurseth, you mean? A Kurseth. A uh, Kurseth, I yeah. mean, yeah. <laughs> um, we, know, we know them no longer as Syra Noavec and Arcus Kurseth, but the other way around. Um, the word Kerta here explains uh, the state that they have been put into. I like, I love the use of the word crushed, uh, as if their world has been turned upside down. Like the, the emphasis, like instead of like that, which has been, um, turned into a new shape, for example. No, she chose the word crushed. Crushed is like this harsh. Uh, it's harsh. Because it's very it's, harsh. It's like, it's not it's like, like a revelation. Exactly. You can't, you can't unknow it. Yes. Yes. You know? So. Yeah. Um, I wrote here in my notes, um, mm-hmm. they are both crushed from the inside. Their, wor- they, their whole lives, they believed something only to find out what they have grown up with is not a part of them in the first place. The fact that their fates are now reversed is both a relief and a curse to live with. The fact that this word is a word from the universal Aetherian language says something about the statement. It shows how undeniable this truth is. Like, you can understand the word kerta, like anyone can understand the word kerta because it's like when we said Aetherian, or no, was it Ogren? Ogren, it's not Ogren. Aetherian. Yes. Sorry, sorry, it's Ogren. <laughs> um, I thought I was thinking what would be the word Ogra. Mm-hmm. It's og- Ogren language because it comes from Ogra. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. how I thought. <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> never mind, never mind how I was, how I was thinking. Um, I was saying because like when we said we compared og- Ogren to the English language, like anyone can speak English or most people, like a high percentage can speak English. It's like Ogren. So for me, that was the choice of that word from that language is so it should be undeni- it's an undeniable fact even the oracle was from Ogra they went to Ogra mm-hmm. to go to the oracle because the oracle wanted to see them yes. so it's like it's it's undeniable fact but You're- Ogren isn't the common language it's Ossirian really yes oh i must have mixed them up yeah but that doesn't like devalue the statement i mean no because even agra has there is the word agra on one of the parts right yes or agran yes yes right so agra agra, agra. means uh the living li- dark the living dark so yeah i mean We're it's gonna... part of them anyways yeah. i mean it's undeniable because it's part of them even yeah. in the language it's a fact it's a fact yes 
uh, and I I loved I loved that concept when the oracle was explaining to them what is a cure to and what if someone tells you something that's not going to happen it already happened to you but it changes your life it changes your yeah. future your path It's an interesting concept. Like it could be used in so many stories. Actually, I I'm surprised that this is the first time anybody used it, or not the fr- of course not the first time. But I mean, yeah, no, she had an had an original thought. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yes, Veronica, yes, with Veronica the Karab. Kirta, yeah, yeah, with Kirta. Even the word um, the oracle, mm. the oracle here says. Kirta, she said, is a revelation that causes your world to shift in its axis. It is a profound truth that once you know it, inevitably alters your future, though it has already occurred and should therefore change nothing. She finished the braided dough and set it aside with a sigh. Dusting off her hands, she sat down across from them and leaned into her arms. In your case, this Kirta comes in the form of your names. She said, you have lived your lives as Akos Karaseth and Syra Noavec, when in fact you are Akos Noavec and Syra Karaseth. She sat back from the table. Akos struggled to breathe. Syra let out a peal of laughter. <laughs> so <is> Syra. <laughs> like, Now she's scared out of her mind. Yeah. We know. <laughs> We know when she laughs, she's scared. <laughs> Because it, it's, it's scary. It's scary yes. to someone who was... Who always resented who they were, and then they're told they're someone else, and now she she would think like, oh my god, I could have lived a different life entirely if this hadn't happened to me. There was this thing about Akos um, before he knew his fate, mm-hmm. the his true fate or his true name. When the Ogren lady who did the who who dealt with plants and. In the shop, you know, the one yes, he yes, met her. Yes, yes, yes. When she gave him the journal to fill in. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Agra, it was on, on Agra. Agra yes, yes, to fill in the things he know and stuff. Knowing that you, you're going to die and how you're going to die makes you not want, which is a very big part of life. I mean, yeah. you want things. And I think I love, I love how the, the resolution went to him when he was about to die in the end. Mm-hmm. And he... new want i don't want to die i don't want to and that was affected by sire actually like that was a part of her in him i love how it went full circle you know it's he doesn't want and he doesn't want to choose and he doesn't choose and and then he finds it in him he's finally alive i mean i want i wanted to know him as alive akos you know yeah we know him as this solemn person who's going to die and who doesn't want anything in life but then a person who wants to live yes how would he be i don't know (laughs) do you have anything in part two that you want to refer to i love the part as well where um (laughs) he didn't know what to what had come over him in the garden pulling her close when she knew it was selfish when he knew it was selfish that he couldn't give her what she wanted At her own insistence, he ought to listen to her, maybe even break things off with her completely, because there was no ridding himself of his fate, and no way of convincing either of them that things would be the same if he didn't have death in service to her family to look forward to. But the longing for her had pierced right through the haze that had settled over his mind the past few weeks, and he was too relieved that feeling something... that he hadn't had the heart to suppress it. And he'd gone on wanting her even while they struggled closer and closer, like there just wasn't enough of her and never would be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love these two. Yes, but I love their clumsiness with their intimacy. It showed how young they are and yeah. inexperienced and... You how know, childish it still is. Yes. <laughs> and how, because each of them are their, each other's firsts. It's, yeah. It's so like it's going to be with us, you know, the, yeah, yeah, with yeah. marriage. And yeah, it's so relatable. I mean, not yet, but it's going <laughs> to be relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. 
Moving on. <laughs> um, if fate is a cage, he said, freed from that cage, you, ch you can choose, do, go, whatever, whatever you'd like. You can, in some ways, finally know who you are. And I'm not sure if that was before or after he knew his fate. Which part was it? Oh, like he knew it. He knew. He knew. It. He he knew. knew. And that uh, while saying that, he knew. The thing is, now he knows, okay? But why isn't he freed? Why does he still not want to choose to go or do whatever? That was my question. Like, once you find out you're not gonna die in the service of the family Novak, be with your freaking girlfriend. Like, what the yes, hell? Yes, and conquer the world. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yes, why, why wasn't he freed right away? I still don't, I don't, don't get that. I still don't understand it as well. Like, that was something I wanted to ask you as well. Like, in the things that bothered me about the book, it uh, I said that um, the fact that Akos left so abruptly and without a word, without telling Syrah anything, like, what do you think about that? Like, it, personally, it pissed me off. Like, yes, you I know you're sacrificing yourself and you don't want her to follow you and you want her to hate you, so it's easier... But I mean, is it worth it? He didn't know if it was worth it except when um, Yima came and uh, and helped him, him and yes. made him concentrate on his mission. He didn't even know if he's going to kill him or not when he, he was with him in the same room for the first time. And why go after him? You know that she can do it better than you. Why not be with her? And exactly. Like, like if you had worked together with Syrah, you, ha you could have made a perfect plan like, and I don't think it's just for the sake of the plot or the rising action or whatever. I don't think it's like she did it for for this for reason, dramatic for effect. dramatic effect. No, I think, I don't know, something we, we didn't get. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, it, I think it just had something to do with that they had to separate. They had to separate in order to to explore themselves in a way, Ash. And Akos... Akos, in the third part that we're going to explore in, in sh shortly... That's when uh, when he crosses a line, you know, when he finally uh, kills that part, that innocent part of himself, you know, where by he, doing what? Uh, by being disloyal to his family, Fre his, his friends. friends. Yes, yeah, yes. That part of him that's always the nice guy, always the guy who wants to save everyone. The one where he that was the first moment where he just thought about himself and no one else. He was very selfish in that moment. And I guess he had to go through that to have like a character development or something. I don't know, a peak in his personality. I don't know what it was. But it still scars him even after the war and everything. It skills is still scarring him. But then again, if it wasn't Syrah who was going to kill Lazmet, it had to be Akros, wasn't it? She can't kill him. It has to be someone who, who whose Lazmet's abili ability doesn't work on him. Yes. But she the, she could have gotten him into the, the, mm -hmm. the house without yes. Jorak interfering, without him having that to lose Jorak. I mean, we keep doing this circle <laughs> <laughs> of what if. I yeah. don't know. So a third part. Yeah. Ruzu? A ruzo, mm -hmm. a reflection as in a mirror. Okay, this is the part where the reader gathers that both Syrah and Akos end up going on the same mission, but on different paths. That's when we have... A mirror. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh -huh. like parallelism. Yeah. Okay. We see huh. a sort of parallelism in their mission. Both of them are forced to do things that they don't plan to do. Um, Syrah is forced to give into Ize Benazit's pressure of killing Lazmet in only a week, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't enough, of course. We know that. Yeah. Akos has. I mean, she's on a different planet. <laughs> yeah, for God's sakes. <laughs> Akos has his own challenges to face. The origin of the word also lays a role because it's the language that Syrah grew up with and which Akos can speak by blood, the Shotet language. So, so again, hmm. so again, parallelism. Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Another thing that can connect them together. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence that in this part, Syrah admits that she's still in love with Akos, acknowledging her feelings in a form of reflecting on how she feels. She feels without him at her side. So basically, she was, ref she was reading. She was admit admitting the love 
for Akos when she was reading about the Shotet family. So the bonding of Akos is Shotet because he grew up as a Thuv- uh No. No, she what was she was reading about his origin uh-huh. while admitting that she loves him. So basically parallelism again is something that connects them together. So it's like a reflection of how she feels about him. I don't know. It's like this the word Uruzo a reflection so i was like thinking by the way no wait it, it doesn't have to be that it's her admitting that she still loves him and he was remembering her and uh he was going to uh, to kill lazmuth at that moment he was so he was in the house and remembering her and then he was like remembering where he liked her then loved her he hadn't told her that he loved her and we didn't know i mean yes yes and then left her So, Aww. and she at the same time was angry at him that he left he her, left. Yes. but she still loves him. Yes. And, you know, there's yeah, a lot so of mirroring going mirroring on. Mirroring in the, this fourth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Uruzo, which is from the Shotet language, origin of Shotet language, right? Yes, Shotet. Yes. Yes. So, it's like both, it connects them because Saira is a, a Shotet by growing up as a shotet and akos is a shotet because he was born as a shotet so again parallelism <laughs> i really liked her touches with those words yes. i really enjoyed it <laughs> i enjoyed I, analyzing it you know yeah it's, uh, trying it's to very find clever it. of you actually i just read them okay there is something about that word in that part you know but i yes. didn't sit and, co- and connect the dots you that's know? exactly I personally, I think if we didn't do the podcast, I think I would brush these words and let them go, mm-hmm. let them yeah. go by. <laughs> But I don't know. I thought I could do the <laughs> do the extra effort of <laughs> going <laughs> the extra mile to Which actually, figure out. Which actually, it gives so much depth to the story. Yes, yeah. it does. It does on so many levels. Part four is actually my favorite one. Yes, part four uh, and five, but four mostly because it's like this slow resolution. Yes, that's where it, like both shit of the, goes down. Yes, <laughs> it goes down, and both of them find themselves again. Yeah, like, there is this two parts of reflection to them, not reflection in the sense of part three. I mean, Akko starts realizing that he still wants. Saira starts realizing that. Yes, she still wants to live and she has so much to live for even without Akos and that she, I don't know, that she accepts pain as part of her. Mm -hmm. And even like there is, uh, and there is a lot of wisdom in that part. But like start by saying the uh, the word and then we can go into it. Okay, so part four. Part four, we have the word Agra. Mm -hmm. Um, The living dark. Yes. The noun in Ogren, which means the living dark. So here I interpret it as um, this is the part where Akos is forced to follow the big saying of Syra. Lo, honor has no place in survival. <laughs> yes. Um, so to reflect on the word Agra, I interpret it as Akos stepping into the dark side and leaving his innocent self behind to do what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, there was this quote. <laughs> I love how we're just picking out quotes today. <laughs> Here it is. Aquas's eyes pricked with tears. He was so hungry. He was so tired. He needed to do as Yima said. Is your mission to be loyal to your family, your friends, your nation? No, that was not his mission. So that's like... Where he where he rats out uh, Kuzar. Yeah. He says, Kuzar, he choked out. Jorak Kuzar. Lazmit nodded. He walked away from the table and took his seat in the armchair, leaving Akos to his meal. And that's like, after that, we have him like in a really bad condition, poor guy. He like cries and it's like, uh, he has like a mental breakdown and he keeps throwing out the food that he ate because he feels guilty about Jorak. And um, that's when mm-hmm. that's when Yima comes in and tells him that Jorik has been arrested. So that's like I th- I feel like that's literally cr- like 
the moment of crossing a threshold. Like, mm -hmm. there's no turning back from here. Like, literally, he's done the worst thing he, as Akos, like, could his morals... Could ever do, yes. With his morals, he could ever do. Like, he, he used With his Jorik. loyalty and his he, pure, innocent self. Yes. And shyness and yes. all that is Akos. <laughs> and that was the part as well with uh, the living dark uh, is where uh, Syra finds out about uh, Rizek still mm -hmm. being a part of Aija in, mm -hmm. her, in his body. It was this part. Yeah, the living dark. So it's like it's like this unknown person. He's like this unknown thing of like, is he my brother? Is he not my brother? He's like this completely entirely different thing. Should I trust him? Should I not trust him? So it's like she's living in the dark mm -hmm. of not knowing whether this person is Aija or Rizek or whatever. So it's like... And then we have this moment of, I don't remember, was it in part four? I think it was in part four. The very end where she asks, what does the word Agra mean? Yes, and then she realizes that she can counter the anti-current. Yes. And see, Sifa tells her, it's yes. the, it means the living dark. It means the living dark. So it was mentioned by word. Where was it? If the anti-current was light and I was plagued by dark, Maybe current was my gift. She is herself a small Agra, the Agran dancers had said to me when they saw my current gift displayed. Does anyone know what the word Agra actually means in Agran? I said. It means the living dark, Sifa replied. I laughed a little, and as a narrow hatch opened on the underside of the ship above us, I raised my shadow-stained hands to the sky. <laughs> so it's like literally... It was an epic... <laughs> it was epic moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in that part as well, there was this um, part that touched me personally because I'm someone who, who dreams and expects to achieve all her dreams and <laughs> that life would be, I don't know, easy and I would have everything I want and isn't that what... <laughs> everyone wants <laughs> i don't know hey, but i mean we've achieved the dream of our podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i mean uh i was confronted here here but some by something uh, yima said yeah uh she was uh telling this to Akos or oh, in the cell when she said do you think life is gonna be yeah okay well, i know that. why do you have this expectation that life will make concessions for you she scowled we are not promised ease comfort or fairness only pain and death yes i mean this is harsh but i mean right why do we expect that life would make everything easier for us yes i mean life is supposed to be challenging too so it's life so yeah it's, there is worth and meaning to what we do if we if we do everything easily and everything comes to us easily yeah i don't know yeah so there was this uh, thing <laughs> no that was a really like confronting moment for us as readers I yeah mean, not just Akos. not just Akos <laughs> and then there was this thing with want again it was even portrayed in Lazment he said I want I want and I will take whatever I can get my hands on even if it's you it runs in the family <laughs> 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 no but I mean yes it's want it's want and, and dreaming and I don't know. It's it's so this story is so much about life more than death. Even though the fates are are all about death, yeah, <laughs> are all about dying and <laughs> in pain. But it's it's more it has a reflection of reality in a way. Yeah. And there was this part. There there was this thing. What did that Lesmet said that I think I don't know. I thought that okay. So. He was talking about them as Noavex, I think, not as Shotet. Okay. Yeah. We are better than them, Lazmet said, slamming his glass down on the table beside his chair. He stood. We learned the reaches of this galaxy when they hadn't even come up with names for themselves. We know what is valuable, what is fascinating, what is important. They throw it away. And we are stronger, more resilient, more resourceful. They have, and they have somehow managed to keep us low since they became aware of us. We will not remain low. They do not deserve to be above us. I don't know 
why I had this thought. I think it's something that has to do with my talks with my father, but <laughs> I said this could be said about Egypt. Our culture and where we came from, the ancient Egyptian. Oh. I mean, we're here before any civilization has ever been made. And since they became aware that we could s exceed them or, s I don't know, they made us into wow. the third world or whatever all that <laughs> all that we are now and we can't even have opportunities because we are because we're egyptians and one day they didn't exist and we we had a lot of knowledge and we even knew about space <laughs> when they didn't when they didn't even go to the moon you know i mean it goes way we go way back and this I think is a good description for us. Yeah, I don't know. That's so true. I never yes. thought about that. Like, forget about it politically or anything, as in civilization. Yeah, we we think of Europeans, our and, culture, and the our rest ancestors. of the world is more cultured than more civilized. But actually, we knew civilization before they even existed or were together or had any kind of civility to them. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not trying to offend anyone or anything, but this is it's not just, offensive. It's just a fact, I guess. I don't know. It's like you thought of it on a deeper level. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have the t the nationality, the features, the name, the history, but you don't feel it in yes. your blood. It's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. What what was valuable isn't here anymore okay we, we've gone off topic <laughs> let's go back to <laughs> the fate of the wide <laughs> hey maybe people want to listen to this i don't know <laughs> okay um uh, part five uh no still in part four okay um just as uh, akos's uh, revelation was that he wants he finally wants and he wants to live and he wants to love and he like wants to fight. Saira had sort of the same revelation as in she she said the uh, wait she was in the arena and she felt like she belongs there where people who love to fight uh, oh, were yes. usually there. Yes. And she was like, and I love to fight, but I also loved to live. Mm. I wouldn't say I had never thought of dying as some kind of relief when the pain was at its worst, when I lost my true mother to the darkness I didn't yet understand, and I wouldn't say the li that living was always or even often a pleasant experience for me. But the discovery and the rediscovery of other worlds, the burn and ache of muscles being building strength, the feeling of Akos's warm, strong body against mine, the glint of my mother's decorative armor at night in the sojourn ship. I loved them all. So this is basically her life. What she what gave it meaning, what she didn't appreciate but gave it meaning, and now at that moment she she realizes and know that's it. That's what she has and that what's what she wants to fight for. Because if she doesn't want to fight for it, then what what will she fight for? Yeah. She will die Pointless. Pointless, yes. <laughs> her death would be pointless. Yeah. And she's she lived all her life uh marginalized because of her current gift, because of her family, because mm. of her personality even. So Nobody would think about her when she's not there, you know? That's so true. Yeah, I love that part. That was her... Her revelation. Her revelation, yes. Her coming for a circle. Her development. Yeah, yeah. From there, she can finally achieve what she wanted to. Yeah. Knowing oneself is... Is empowering impor yeah. and important. It's yes. important, yeah. Because no one knows you more than... You. You. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one can really know what you like or love or how you want to live your life except yourself. You know? But even knowing how you want to live your life doesn't guarantee that you live it that way. I mean, I am someone who, who knows exactly what she, what she wants to do with her life. And I'm not getting any closer, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because opportunities are not helping, you know? Like, your surroundings are not helping. But I guess, in a way, as long as you know what you want, 
when you when it comes towards you, you'll take the opportunity. There are a lot of people who don't know what they want or don't know what they want to do with their lives, and they have all the opportunities God in the world. God help them. <laughs> <laughs> and they have all the opportunities in the world, but they're not taking them because they don't know what they want, you know? Yeah. It's so ironic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Okay, part five. Part five. Okay, what was the word in part five? Arzode. Arzode. Yeah, arzode. It's a verb in Zoldan, which means which means to mar as with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I. It took me a while to understand what mar uh, with a knife would stand for in part five, but then you had a great comment, which was. You said, like, when mar means deforming or mutilating. Yes, and, and that for me, reflects on the story of... We I said Hessa. <laughs> Hessa is deformed. Yes, Hessa is deformed. Like, it's scarred with her, with the temple yeah. broken. And the scars of the attack is still there. Yes. Voa has the dark cloud over it. Yeah. Where Syrah had uh, deflected the attack. Mm-hmm. The entire galaxy is being marred by their idea of controlling the oracles and yes. some being fate, uh, fate uh, or oracle. What? What's the word for it? Favored? Favoring the oracles and others who want to control their own... Own fates. Own fates. Own lives. Own lives, not being guided by the oracles or having them choose a certain path, which was... a uh, an argument throughout the novel of yes. uh, them directing them to yeah, yeah the oracles directing the characters to what they see fit and and it is subjective it's what they see fit not what the characters see so mm -hmm. to me like when i first read before i knew what the definition of mar was like in my head it was like uh with an when they said mar as with a knife for me it meant like sharpening a knife you know, but I guess it doesn't mean that. But mm -hmm. if it was that definition, I would have said like, okay, sharpening a knife means you're getting ready for something. Mm -hmm. You know, when you sharpen your knife, you're getting ready. So I was like feeling like the Syrah is getting ready to be the new show part of the new Shotet government. Akos was getting ready for his new life where he doesn't have to think of dying or uh, he can relish in mm -hmm. being with Syrah without having that thought in his mind you know yeah and it was like this new beginning to something Aloha, but i guess marring means deforming so that's not the direction it was going so yeah what if akos like thought of his fate to syrah in the beginning like when he thought he's gonna die in her service as in sort of she's yes my world my love my my job, my death. <laughs> I don't know. Like there was this uh, the TV show, The Crown, the Netflix TV show. Yeah, series. Um, El Queen Queen Elizabeth's father uh, told Philip, her husband, that she is the job. Like she basically is your job. You have to be there for her, and because he's king regent. Yes, no, he isn't King Regent. He's just Prince Philip. Oh, right. And uh, he didn't even have, uh, like, he isn't a prince in England. He's a prince from, I mean, anyway. Uh, let's get into the, not get into details. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I found that beautiful in a way. It's so English. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No, not in that sense. I mean, if we apply that to Aquas and Syrah, she, she is someone who's in so much pain. Yes. And has seen a lot, even him, but I mean, and he's someone that could be a relief to that. You know, there was this part at the very end mm -hmm. when they were together, it, it lay, um, after a couple ah, of seasons. Haven't you read... Uh, realized i would go after you i would pretty much go anyway <laughs> you go something like that yes 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 <laughs> wait who's gonna get it first <laughs> we passed through the current stream today I, I said will you come with me in case you hadn't noticed he said i'll pretty much go with you anywhere <laughs> yeah it has something of 
Albert and Victoria, Philip and Elizabeth in it. I Everything. don't know. Yes. <laughs> he he tapped my nose with a gray stained finger. Did leaving you just... a... <laughs> Did you just stain my nose right before I have to go out in public? <laughs> he grinned. Her and as a sovereign. Like imagine a queen going out with a stain on her face. <laughs> on her nose. <laughs> I hate you, I, he sa- I said. And, and I, I love, love you. you. And this replied. is the first time we hear him say it. <laughs> <laughs> Not think it, say it. <laughs> yeah. By the way, going back to the deforming, um, hmm. there w- it said here, there was a bandage on his arm. The tentacle of some kind of venomous, venomous ogren plant had wrapped around him while he harvested it and ate away at his skin like acid. Mm-hmm. The scar would stretch right across his shotet marks, passing through them, though not entirely erasing them. So it's like his skin is deformed and marred, removing kind of like the scars that he had from all the deaths, but they're still there lingering. They're still part of him, you know, mm-hmm. like so in a way. Yes, both of them are marred in a way. Their souls are yeah. marred in a way. From all that they've seen and done and had to do and... Yeah. There's also this part at the very end. Mm -hmm. um, With the idea of sharpening the knife and going into a new world. When they said, um, I am Shotet. I am Mm. sharp as broken glass and just as fragile. I see all of the galaxy and never catch a glimpse of it. And it is all mine. Prepare yourselves, came the shot from below. Both Tekka and Akos released my hands almost in the same moment and the ship was consumed by blue light. (laughs) The end! The end! (laughs) (laughs) We literally went through the whole novel with quotes and discussions. (laughs) Wow. This episode is very long. I wanted to do that. I always want to do that, by the way. What? Like, go through the book part by part. Yes. It's so... Not easier, it's just... It's how we would normally talk, you know? Yeah, it's how we would connect over the novel more than anything else. With someone I really want to talk about as well Mm -hmm. is Tekka. Yeah. (laughs) I (laughs) love that girl. She's like a cool best friend I yeah <laughs> i love how she stood by her through everything literally everything yeah wait there was and this... understood her so well yes there was this part that i really liked when syra was in pain and she was there holding her oh, here no, i got it i got it. it i got it i got it shaking i threw the blankets back and looked at my bare legs Faint shadows wrapped around my ankles like shackles. My head and heart pounded in the same rhythm. I didn't realize I was making a noise, a horrible heaving noise like a dying animal, until Tekka opened the door, her bright hair piled on top of her head. She spotted the current shadows immediately and came to my bedside. Pulling the sleeves of her sleep clothes over her hands, she sat on the bed and pulled me against her, pressing my face to her bony shoulder. I sobbed into her, sh- in her into her shirt, and she held me in place, in silence. I didn't, I didn't want them back, I choked out. I know. I don't care if they're powerful, I don't. I know that too. She rocked us back and forth, slowly, for a long time. People called them a gift, she said after a while. What bullshit. I love how she's so protective over her now. How yeah. they've crossed this awkward thing, <laughs> finally passed this, ah, I killed your father and your mother. <laughs> Let's get over that and be friends. <laughs> or was it her brother? Her mother and her brother? I don't remember. She killed her mother in a way. Yeah. And But, like, I mean, Taka, I think, hated her because she's an Oevek at the beginning. But no, but then she realized that, no, she's something else. And- mm-hmm. And by the way, yes, the idea of the current gifts being gifts and Sissy as well uh, struggling with hers. It's suffocating her and Syra causing her, it, her pain. Yeah. I mean... Speaking of Sissy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, like the first time I read the novel, I went through them 
Mm -hmm. Okay, but the second time, I felt like the first time I read them, I felt like they slowed me down a lot. And the second time I read the novel, which was for this podcast, I I skipped them entirely. Like I didn't even read them once, and mm -hmm. I was actually fine without them. So they're 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 a story on their own, and they're not really part of the plot. They're just something in between <laughs> to I don't know make the story larger, I guess, but. For me, it wasn't, it, it just, I don't know, I didn't enjoy them as much. I didn't like them at all. There was mm. something about CZ that I found boring, personally. I, I, I noticed that I was fine without them. I was fine without her chapters. Even yes. Aija. <laughs> Ija's chapters are so freaking confusing. Oh my god, I don't understand <laughs> a word. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> is he cuckoo <laughs> <laughs> it's like i don't have the time or the energy to analyze what you're saying like <laughs> there are moments where i don't know like in the very last chapter i didn't finish the the last the epilogue epilogue or whatever it's called really i couldn't i i didn't understand it so it didn't make any sense to me it's it's beautiful no, you didn't go to the part where he saw them aging. And that like, one I read. I read their last paragraph. Uh -huh, okay, but the yeah. ones before that, no, I didn't it's read them. It's a general sense to where the uh, oracle conflict is going. Yeah. No, I read the last paragraph where they he holds her hand and they go up to the show, uh, the, 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 the sojournship, the new sojournship. No, that one I read, but I didn't read the other ones. Yeah. The other ones were about the world, about Aija himself going to learn and uh an ogre going to the to the ogre and oracle to learn mm -hmm. about his current gift since there is no going away from it. Uh Izay and Sizi and Ast they ha yes, like you said, they have a story of their own. I mean, I skipped them as well in this when I was reading for the second time. And um I loved that how she's suffocating, how uh, she's trying to use the 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 her, her the idea of her gift is I liked it. Yeah, I it mean, is. her using the different textures to soothe someone. No, it was interesting, definitely. And it was kind of tense and scary having Izay um, reacting this way to grief. I mean... Not being able to express sadness mm -hmm. or even cry. Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> you mean Sizi? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And it's a story on its own. I don't feel... Uh, it, it contributed to the sense of... The politics. The politics, yes. Of the side, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think it, it also told a little bit about Sifa. She knows all, all these decisions and she doesn't say anything, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And we know as well. If I knew these things, I would tell Siron, Akko, so. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there is a reason behind that. Yeah. But yes, I mean, if we have someone who... Who knows something like this? Who knows the future? Or not, the future isn't certain. There are is a lot of paths I mean, physically. Anyway, but I would want them to be objective. Not make decisions based on their Emotions, preferences. Yeah. Or, or their, or even their, um, like, even their decisions. Even if, if these are not choices, they're like well-made decisions. But they shouldn't decide for anyone. They yeah. should tell everything they see. I mean, maybe it's impossible. It maybe is. their gift doesn't allow <laughs> them. Maybe there is like many possibilities and it's so hard to tell them all. No, it's in a way that it's their burden to bear. Mm -hmm. You know, they they can't ask anyone's opinion every single time. You know, they have to decide which better judgment is the which judgment is the better one. You know, mm. because if they they make a vote for every single decision, people will hate her for choosing one over the other. It's better if no one knows the options and that she just chooses, you know. But what like, gives her the right? Just she, knowing? She, yes. Yes. Maybe. She's an oracle. <laughs>
<laughs> that's her right. <laughs> Being called an oracle, that's basically her right to do anything. Maybe. So yeah, that was Fate's Divide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a lot to say in this one, didn't we? Thank you for making it till the end of this chapter. We very much hope you enjoyed it. This was the last book in the Carve the Mark duology. For next month, we're doing TV show and movie book adaptations. And we're starting with Let It Snow, since it's premiering on Netflix the 8th of November. Await chapter 5. My name is Hanin. Mark the page. <laughs>